Hey everyone, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Lauren and today I am going to be talking about all of the books that I read in the month of July. So overall, July was an amazing reading month for me for a couple of reasons. Uh, in the month of July, I read a grand total of 2,832 pages. I started 11 books. I completed eight of them, DNF'd one of them, and two of them I'm still working on. As far as the books that I completed, I had one two and a half star, two three and a half stars, four four stars, and a five star. So that is that's an amazing month for me for it to give those kinds of ratings. Another reason that this was such a great reading month for me is because I though I didn't want to mention this in the last couple of videos, but I've honestly been in kind of a reading slump. Somehow saying it made it feel more true. I almost felt as though like if I said it, it would make the reading slump worse. I think just the combination of all the books, the books that I read, I was really excited about all of them. So I think that that sort of helped me pull out of it. So very quickly, I just want to mention the books that I am still reading. Uh, the first one is Oathbringer by Brandon Sanderson. I'm, yeah, I've been doing a Stormlight Archive read-along for all of 2022, and I read about a third of uh, Oathbringer this month, and I am loving this book. Like, unpopular opinion so far. I actually like this better than Words of Radiance, which I think seems to be most people's favorite. As far as this versus Way of Kings, I'm not sure which one. You know, I'll have to see once I complete the book, but I am I am absolutely loving this so far and just cannot wait to continue with Oathbringer. And then the other that I'm still working on, I actually just started this yesterday, is Horror Store by Grady Hendrix. This was honestly kind of a cover buy for me. I've seen other people on booktube have this book and be reading it, and I am like so taken with this the style that this of this cover it is meant to look kind of like an Ikea catalog which I think is really cool it's set in a store that's kind of an Ikea knockoff I'm about 65 pages in so I think that's what maybe a third almost a third of the book and enjoying it so far right now is the last day of July so I'm probably gonna read some more of this this evening and get a little bit farther in it but as for now really liking this one now as far as all of the books that I completed in July I think I'm gonna mix it up a little bit and go in the order of cover the covers how much I like them from the one I like the least all the way up to the one I like the most just feeling like you know doing something a little different this month so let's just jump right into it and talk about all the books that I read in July all right first up we have got Legion by Brandon Sanderson this is actually one of I think three books that I've read this that I read in July by Brandon Sanderson. This is, to me, feels like such a typical, like, action cover for a mass market paperback. It's, there. I mean, there's nothing to love or hate about it. It's just a kind of nothing, and I feel nothing for this cover. So it's at the bottom of my list. Despite that, I actually really enjoyed this book. This is, I think, a bind up of, oh god, there is a wasp in this room right now. I'm gonna scream, hang on! Where was I? Um, fun fact about me, I'm like terrified of wasps. Moving forward, what was I even talking about at this point? So I would think I was talking about Legion by Brandon Sanderson. Legion is a bind up of three, I don't know what you would call them, short stories, novella, novelette. I don't know what the tipping point is between those three that makes what turn into what. This is the story of a man named Stephen Leeds who is kind of a Harry Dresden type of character. He is a sort of detective. He has these hallucinations of people who have her are kind of gifted with different like genius level skills. They help him sort of solve solve these cases. I think that this book would definitely appeal to you if you are a Dresden Files fan. This main character, Stephen Leeds, is like Harry Dresden. However, he takes himself a little bit more seriously. Like, he's a little bit more put together. A little bit more put together. Uh, but it still has that same sort of flavor. So if that is appealing to you, I would definitely recommend that you give it a shot. Overall, I ended up giving this four stars. I really enjoyed it. There were a couple points in the story that kind of drug just a little bit. But it was still, this was a fun kind of action adventure type of story. Uh, I had a great time reading it and honestly it was fun to just kind of branch out with something different by Brandon Sanderson, um, an urban fantasy. I really I generally tend to prefer urban fantasy over high fantasy so it was kind of fun to read something more along those lines from from Brandon Sanderson. Next up we have The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager. This is the second, my second book to read by this author. The first one was The Final Girls which I thought was okay. My friend Leslie at The Nerdy Narrative, she has a book club called The Wine and Crime 
and book club and the last time I lied was the July selection so uh, this one it seems like is one of his most popular books so I decided this if there was any time to try another one of his books this is the one so I joined in on that I also ended up being on a live show with Leslie and a couple other booktubers including Kate at the Literary Apothecary and Anitha Gade I'll make sure to put a link for that live stream video down in the video description box below as well as all of their channels I hope you will go over there and check that video out it was a great time we had such a fun time on that live stream uh, discussing this book which I really really enjoyed it is the story of a woman named Emma who was asked to return to a camp that she went to as a kid her uh, cabin mates three other girls who were older than her by I think a couple years two or three years uh, they snuck out one night and disappeared were never heard from again so we follow her as she goes back to this camp to kind of get some closure about whatever happened and honestly she's trying to she wants to know what happened to these girls so she kind of thinks that she might be able to piece it together and figure out what happened that summer so many years ago this book I really I really enjoyed it I ended up giving it four stars there were a couple things that kept it from you know getting a five star there's some sort of psychological psychological issues going on with this main character that the explanation the like the explanation for her psycho psychological issues are a little shaky and I feel like there were also maybe a couple little tiny plot holes however that did not stop me from just eating this book up just like a bunch of like a pile of junk food I could not once I started reading it I pretty much couldn't put it down I think I read it in maybe two sessions um, it was an addictive book to read it was fun it had some interesting twists to it the characters were really well developed and I am a camp girl I loved camp when I was younger I went to camp for several years when I was a kid I also was a camp counselor at one point like I loved camp so this book really spoke to me on that level as well it was just all around a good time this one was definitely worth a read and if you haven't picked it up before and you that sounds good to you then I definitely recommend that you give it a try especially if you like thrillers to begin with or you know camp like camp books around camp being at summer camp or camping in the woods or whatever this may also be a fun pick for you next on the list is the strange bird by Jeff Vandermeer um, I think this is a this is a pretty interesting cover the colors are pretty muted and washed out and not really like my favorite aesthetic but it's okay like it's okay so far there are three books in the Bourne series Bourne the strange bird and dead astronauts which I also read this month um, this is like the in, an in-between I think it's like 1.5 and then dead Astro dead astronauts is the second the world that Bourne is set in it's kind of a dystopian society where the company has taken over the series has I think it's a a, a big statement on the destruction of the earth and like biological warfare that type of thing uh, and there are a lot of creatures in this world that have been made by the company it's all kind of good in theory but ultimately led to the demise of this world and this book follows a bird the strange bird which is actually mentioned in Bourne it doesn't go into great detail about it but it is a creature that was very briefly mentioned in Bourne and so this is the story of that creature that um, was created by the company. Born is a pretty, it's a pretty unusual book. I mean, if you've ever read anything by Jeff Vandermeer, he's a very unusual, the way he writes is very unusual. Um, and this, this is kind of the typical feel of Jeff Vandermeer's writing. Born was less so, but this is more of like his standard writing style. Uh, this book was, I thought, very very beautiful I really enjoyed it this I ended up giving four stars although I you know looking back on it it's probably a little bit close it's probably more like a 4.5 uh, there wasn't much wrong with this other than the fact that I could have used more of it uh, I wish that this had been a little bit longer of a story but that's not really I don't know if that's really I don't know if that can really be considered an issue with the book though to love it so much that you want more of it so uh, I think in this moment I'm rounding this up to 4.5 um, I just love the world that Bourne is set in and I I want to know more about it like I really wanted to know more about it this gave me just a little bit a tiny nibble more about that world uh, it, the writing was beautiful the meaning the, the themes explored and the characters were just fascinating um, it's kind of a sad story but in just this the really beautiful poetic sort of way this this was just a great book and I absolutely recommend it next up we have dead astronauts by Jeff Vandermeer uh, this cover I really I really like how vibrant this cover is um, and I think it's 
the, the kind of psychedelic quality to it. I don't know. Uh, it really appeals to me. Born and The Strange Bird, they look like they go together. They look like they're in the same series. This one doesn't. As far as writing goes, this does not feel like it goes with the other two books. This I actually ended up DNFing. I think I read exactly half of this book uh, and I could never get into it. This book feels like poetry. There's nothing wrong with poetry. However, the, it doesn't make sense to me for books in the same series to feel like they don't go together. Like I was expecting the same writing style because this is, is the same series. The writing style made it very challenging to decipher anything else about this world. I don't know, maybe I'm just kind of a dum-dum and it was too, too smart for me or something. But I don't know that that's necessarily the case. I think the problem was that it didn't feel like it went with the first two books. It wasn't what I was expecting. It didn't give me the kind of um, exposition about this world that I was craving so desperately. I guess there's a chance I might pick this up again someday and give it another try, but I'll definitely go into it knowing what it is and what it isn't. I don't know, take that as you will. If you if you have read Born and you want to learn more about the world and you're also sort of into more of a poetic style of writing and sort of wading through that, this you may love this, but for me it was just, it was kind of a fail. All right, next we have In an Absent Dream by Seanan McGuire. Uh, this is the, I think, is it the fourth book in the Wayward Children series? As far as the cover goes, I think this is a really lovely cover. I think all of the books in that series are really beautiful. They're very enchanting, uh, very whimsical, and I mean, what's not to like about this cover? It's, it's beautiful. Um, this is the second book that I've read in this series. The first was Down Among the Sticks and Bones, uh, which I really enjoyed. I think I gave that four stars. This one though, mm, I really, I was not a big fan of this. This for me was a two and a half star book and honestly probably would have been even lower than that except that I love the writing style of this book. I love the way that these books are written. So this, these books are about children who have had portal adventures. They've traveled through portals to other worlds uh, and have come back over back over to our world and aren't quite the same. Uh, and this is about a young girl who's, she's kind of a dreamer and she ends up finding this portal into this world to the goblin market and uh, some like bargains that she that she makes along the way that wind up being uh, pretty sketchy. Interesting concept, but this didn't quite work for me because there were just a couple of things that happened that they that happened during the course of the story, but weren't we weren't there for it. They would just be referred to later as just this thing that happened and they were things that sounded interesting. Like, I want to know what that, what that scene looked like, like what that confrontation looked like or what the fight looked like or whatever it was. Like, what, what was that? I don't understand. And there were a few things that happened in this book that were like this. And that was kind of a bummer because this was a otherwise a very slow moving book. Um, and I would have preferred to have a little bit more action and that just, I didn't get to see any of that. Everything that I wanted to know more about, I didn't get to know any more about. And a lot of the things that I wasn't particularly interested in were kind of harped on. I know that this is one of the most well-loved in the series. If this is the most well-loved in the series, like I don't know if I want to read another one. If you've read these and there's one that I, one more I should give a shot. Like I said, I really like Down Among the Sticks and Bones. This, this one didn't work for me, but I'm willing to try a third one. So if there is one that you think that I should give a shot, please. Mention it down in the comments below. Um, I I would be willing to try one more. So if I tried a third book in the Wayward Children series, which one do you think it should be? Next on the list is Birthday Treat by Anthony Self. This is a thriller kind of horror-ish story. This I think is a self published novel. This cover, I just think that this is such a cool cover. I love the minimal, the minimalistic design of it. It looks sort of like a pop 50s style of design. This book, I really enjoyed this book. This is the story of, uh, it's set in this world where I guess it's almost kind of a dystopian concept in a sense. Some people are selected to receive a birthday treat where they are allowed to go out and commit 
a serious crime. The hope for the birthday treat is that they will go out and murder someone uh, and they have no choice but to do this. Well, they do technically have a choice, but if they decide that they will not take their birthday treat, then they go on to a show, I think it's called like The Hunted or something, where they are hunted. Like they have to stay in hiding for about a week. If they are found, then, then they, whoever finds them, is allowed to murder them, torture them, do whatever, and they receive a, a monetary prize for it. Uh, and so this book follows multiple perspectives, the primary being a woman who has received a birthday treat but has decided not to take it and so she's on the run. Another of the perspectives is one of the cops who is chasing her. Whenever I do this for my TBR, I think someone had mentioned that on Goodreads this is listed as young adult. This is not a young adult book. Like, this is not. It is, there are some pretty um, gruesome, uh, very descriptive things that happen in this book that, yeah, this is, this is absolutely for adults. This is a, a lot of parts incredibly suspenseful for me. Really, it really ratchets up the tension in it and I really, really enjoyed that. Uh, unfortunately, the, those scenes happen kind of early on and then throughout the book things become, become more of a steady pace. Uh, so I wish that some of that would have carried on into more of the book because I really, I really like those high tension scenes. Nonetheless, I really love this book. I ended up giving it three and a half stars, which I rounded up to four stars on Goodreads. I don't know if any of that sounds good to you. I definitely recommend you pick it up. This is a fun story and it's a self-published, it's a self-published author. So, I mean, of course I would, I want to support them and I hope that you will too. This was, this was a fun, this was a fun time. Next up, we've got You've Lost a Lot of Blood by Eric LaRocca, who also wrote, um, I think it's called Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke. This cover, I don't know. It's so, it's so gruesome and so weird and I absolutely love it. I don't know. May or may not be your thing, but I love it. This is a horror story uh, and it is kind of a story within a story actually. And the two stories I'll call the inside story and the outside story. So the outside story is kind of told in like sort of almost journal, like a journal type of style, like this found journal of this character, this man who uh, is in this relationship with another man. They have kind of a weird, twisted relationship. Uh, and this man wrote the inside story. So uh, it's peppered throughout, like they're going back and forth between this outside situation and then the story that this man wrote. It's a really interesting story about a woman who uh, is a game developer, I guess, and she goes to uh, she goes to work for this man who developed this, uh, like a VR game that is unfinished and she's gone to his estate to help finish the game. She takes her younger brother with her and he is kind of off, kind of an odd child. There's a lot of strange things that are happening along the way that don't seem to make a whole lot of sense. The style of it, it's very disorienting. The whole experience, like just strange things happen. That is the kind of story that I really enjoy. I love feeling, that feeling of what is happening. I don't get it, like what is going on. I think I ended up giving this book four stars. The ending is kind of a twist and I think I sort of saw it coming. I don't know, I don't know that most people necessarily would. So I feel like your enjoyment of the ending might hinge on whether or not you see the twist coming. Um, so it's, I don't know, so it wasn't the greatest ending for me and also the outside story about, you know, the man, the writer, and this relationship that he has, it was sort of interesting, I guess, but I don't particularly understand the point of it. I wish that had been scraped away and the inside story had just been the book. Nonetheless, I really enjoyed this book. This was just like a really fun, like sit down, read the whole thing in one session. Like it definitely had me turning pages. So absolutely worth the four stars I gave it. So yeah, four stars for You've Lost a Lot of Blood. Next up on the list, we have Cytonic by Brandon Sanderson. This is the third book in the Skyward series. And um, yeah, I just love, I absolutely love this cover. I, these are actually the UK editions, this style. I prefer them to the US editions. Although I will say that I <laughs> I don't get this. This book, the, the height of it as compared to Skyward and Starsight, the first two books, it is not the same size. Like what, what is this? Why? Like why? 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 <laughs> That's all I want to know is why! It, it matches, but it will not fit on the shelf with the other two. So, 
Uh, that's irritating still though. I absolutely love this cover. This, I really, I really, really enjoyed this. Although I, I have to admit, I didn't love this quite as much as the first and second books. I would say this was still a great adventure though. Uh, there isn't a whole lot that I can say about the plot. It being the third book in a series, it's a very, it's a very inspirational, very underdog story. And, you know, this book just sort of you know, it, it expands on the world that that <laughs> the Skyward series is set in and the characters, more characters are introduced, uh, more worlds. It's just the, the, the universe, the Skyward universe is just growing bigger and bigger and bigger. And I am absolutely here for it. Like I'm really loving it. It's very, very different than the first two books, but uh, I loved it enough that I gave this book four stars. I think I gave Skyward, uh, I gave Starsight five and Skyward four and a half. This is a four star book. Uh, there's one more book yet to come out. This is going to be a four book series. And I, I am just kind of dying to see how this all wraps up. This is a worthwhile read. So I hope that you will pick it up if, if you have been reading along. Last but not least, we have The Past is Red by Catherine M. Valente. Uh, this cover, just look at it. I mean, it is so beautiful. This book is set in pretty much a water world where there is no more land. All the people that are still alive live on these islands of just floating garbage. Uh, and I don't know, like the illus whoever illustrated this, this is insane. Like it is so well done. The colors are just the contrast of the blue and the red. I could go on and on about this. Just suffice it to say, I love this. This is my favorite cover of all the books that I read this month. Not only that, but this is my favorite book that I read this past month. Uh, this I this is the first book I've ever read by Catherine M. Valente. I am definitely going to read more of her work. Uh, in my last video that I did, I, I mentioned Catherine M. Valente as an author that, you know, I want to read more of her work and put it to a vote as to whether I should read Comfort Me With Apples or Radiance. This follows a girl whose name is Tetley. And she is she's a pariah. She's an outcast in this garbage town society. Um, she committed some, when the book opens up, we know that she committed some sort of crime or something. She did something, some act of betrayal to the people, and she has become just a massive outcast. She has this just very positive, you know, outlook on life, very like glass half full, despite the sort of treatment she, she receives from the people in this world, in this community. She is just She's a ray of sunshine, pretty much, which as the story unfolds, it just, she becomes more and more endearing because of it. There's no two ways about it. The story, it's a pretty depressing story. The earth is a mess. It's just an ecological disaster. Sort of experiencing this world through Tetley's eyes, through this, this, this type of character, like her perspective on this, I don't know. It, it was also very hopeful because of that. It almost had sort of like a fairy tale type of quality to it, but like a, a dystopian fairy tale, so to speak, especially because it's, it's such a short story. It's almost like a parable or something. Um, it was lovely. I loved it. I loved the concept of it. I loved the execution of it, the writing style, the characters. It was, this was just such an incredibly well-conceived, well-fleshed out world. If any of that sounds interesting to you, I definitely recommend you pick it up. It's a short read and I don't know. It's a five star read. I hope it's, it's a five star read for me. I hope it's a five star read for you. Just a great book. So I think that that is going to be it for me today. Those are all of the books that I read in the month of July. I would be very curious to know if you've read any of them and what you thought about them or if there are any of these books that you're interested in reading. Just please talk to me about it in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, I hope that you will like it and possibly subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye.